breakthrough. I decree that even as in Mark 2, 1 to 5, we read the story of the sick, the man that was sick with palsy, where his four friends carried him to the roof. I decree and declare that even as he was carried to the roof, another level, that he ripped the roof off. I decree. Hello everybody, Pastor Lee here, and I'd like to take this time to personally welcome you to Cardia Kingdom Church. Amen? There are a million other places you could have chosen to worship today, but you chose to be here with us today, and we're extremely honored to have you. So, make yourself at home. Feel free to interact with the service via our virtual worship center. You can uh, say amen, clap, send hearts, repeat your favorite parts of the sermon, and pretty much everything else you would normally do in an in-person worship service. Amen? So, I invite you to prepare your hearts for what God is getting ready to do. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the service. Time is it? It's announcement time. And I'm Erica here with this week's announcement. Be sure to join us right here at www.cardia live every Sunday at 3.30 p.m. We are on a journey to build the kingdom. And we want you to come along with us. Be sure when you join that you create an account, log in, upload your picture so that we, we may see who we're interacting with. Now, creating an account doesn't mean that you become a member. It simply let us know who's supporting and who's here so that we may recognize your beautiful face. Here at Cardia, we take prayer seriously because we know that prayer can change things. If you have a prayer request, please visit our main website at www.cardia.church and submit your prayer request so that we may pray with you. This week, we're asking that you join us in agreement for total and complete healing for our brother, Minister Bobby Henry. We're praying that God will totally heal you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Family, we want you to know that at Cardia Kingdom Church, every member is a minister. So be sure to spread love and positivity everywhere you go. Also, be sure to go to all of our social media pages and like, share, and post all of our messages. You never know who may need to hear or see a message that you share. Remember, love is an action word. Well, that's it for this week's announcements. 
May God bless you and enjoy the service. Hello everybody, I'm Daniani here to remind you to get social. Get social by inviting people to church. So right now, you can just click the little button right here in the virtual worship center. Get social by interacting live in the virtual worship center during the service at any time. You can say amen, say hi, refit your favorite sermon point, or just say thank you Jesus. Get social by following us on all social media platforms. Yeah, right now we're okay. Okay, this is Kaviana reminding you to get social. Bye! Sometimes winning doesn't look like winning. Sometimes a win looks an awful lot like loss, looks an awful lot like death. How many times have you been knocked down, tempted to doubt when things don't go the way we think they should? You could imagine the disciples' confusion. When Jesus, their king, their champion, he, he was nailed to a cross and died. He seemingly lost and they didn't know what to do. What you and I often miss and, and what the disciples didn't see was, was that this was all a part of the plan. Jesus said, no one takes my life, I lay it down. What looked like the greatest loss in history was in fact a, a paradigm shifting victory. Jesus rose from the grave and death couldn't touch him. Sin had lost its power and he was crowned the champion of all champions, undefeated. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, which means his victory over sin is your victory over sin. Your victory over addiction and shame. That thing that you thought was dead in your life, he stands ready to breathe new life. His win is now your win. And this victory reverberates through the centuries, declaring forevermore that he is our champion and he is alive. Well, praise God, family. So good to be here with you today to share this time with you and to share the word of God with you. I just want to know, are you ready to receive the word of God? I need to see somebody uh, say in the virtual worship center, yes, I'm ready. Yes, I am ready. People of God, it's extremely important to make it a habit to come to church ready with your cup empty and out ready to receive from God. Amen. Well, family, today we move forward in our sermon series entitled Igniting Kingdom Purpose. Last week in the first installment of this series, God gave us a word entitled, Go, There's Nothing Stopping You. And if you missed that word, take a moment and go over to our YouTube channel by just logging on to www.cardia.cam. That's www.cardia.cam, and it will take you directly to our YouTube channel. That way you can get that word, amen? You're not going to want to miss that. And while you're there, please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned to everything that God is doing uh, through that ministry outreach, all right? All right? So on last week in the sermon, Go, There's Nothing Stopping You, God challenged us to go, to go forward into our God-given kingdom purpose or the reason we were sent. We were reminded that our God is a God of purpose and that he does nothing for nothing. Also, that God is intentional and his plans will be fulfilled no matter what. Amen. We receive the call to become purpose people, purpose people that will make purpose our priority. Amen. We repented from putting purpose on pause, but we gave God our go. But because of the cares of this life and issues, we put purpose on pause to make practical things that to the prudent, logical mind, to the carnal mind, make sense. Amen. Indeed. But we received the command to have a kingdom mind with a kingdom perspective and kingdom priorities. Praise God. And the do in the word for the last week uh, was found in Matthew 6 and 33, where we accepted the call to seek the kingdom of God first, to seek the kingdom of God first and put everything else aside. Amen. So we gave God the green light in our hearts and we decided to go no matter what. 
we've decided to go forward into purpose with God's kingdom as our priority. Praise the Lord. So today, as we move forward to the second sermon in this series, Igniting Kingdom Purpose, God has given us a word today entitled Unstuck, Prevailing in Purpose Over the Starting Stoppers. Unstuck, Prevailing in Purpose Over the Starting Stoppers. Praise God. There are many of God's people today who say in their hearts, God, yes, I want to go. And they begin to go, but then we're stopped. They stopped because they realized they were stuck. Amen, somebody. They had the mind and the heart to go, to go into purpose, but were prohibited from purpose because they realized they were stuck. I see the image in my mind of the people of God poised in the runner's position at the starting block, you know, uh, and then they hear pop the gun. The signal to run has already sounded, but we're stuck at that starting line. We're pulling forward, but something is hindering our feet from moving. We're stuck. Stuck at the start, praise God. Trying to run, but hindered from running because something stronger than we are prohibits us from moving forward, from beginning to run our purpose race. Amen? Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter at the 4th verse. Now, for those of you that do not have Bibles. There is actually a Bible integrated right here in the Virtual Worship Center. Just look at the bottom of the Virtual Worship Center and there should be a tab labeled Bible. And there is a version Bible integrated right in there for you. Amen? So just go with us to 2 Corinthians, turn to chapter 10 and scroll down to verse 4. When you get there, can you just say amen in the chat in the Virtual Worship Center right there? Can you just say, I got it? Not amen. Just can you say, I got it. All right. And we'll wait for about two seconds for you to get there. Amen. So in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter uh, at the fourth verse in the King James, it reads uh, like this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Family, God has revealed to us that the number one thing keeping the saints stuck and prohibited from purpose strongholds. Strongholds that keep us stuck at the starting line, gripping our feet from moving forward, stuck in place, and stronger than we are in our own natural strength and our own natural abilities. Strongholds that hinder you from moving forward despite your intense struggle to break free. Strongholds are literally holding the people of God hostage and keeping the people of God who in their hearts, again, are willing to go, wanting to break free, but they're stuck from moving forward into purpose because of the strongholds in their lives. They just simply can't move forward. They're stuck, praise God, stuck in a state that prohibits the purpose of God from being manifest and becoming priority in their lives. Stuck having a sincere desire to move forward, but are unable to do so, unable to break free because of the strongholds holding them in place. Bow your heads with me, let's pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us in this place today, oh God. We, your people, have gathered together and have come before you today, O God, to receive from you, Lord. Our hearts are open and ready to hear and hearken to your word for us today, O God. We recognize our inability to do anything without you, Lord, but we declare that we are able to do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So today, God, we declare that we are able to hear you clearly because we have hearing and hearkening hearts, and we believe that we hear and will do this word today, O God. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Now, family, as believers, <clears throat> we think of strongholds in terms of demonically driven sins like lust and uh, alcoholism and drug abuse or maybe a controlling violent tendency of some sort. Or, or maybe even a chronic financial struggle that you know is demonically induced, you know, or, or, or the inability to love or have healthy relationships or some mental or emotional condition. But in truth, those are just the fruit and not the root of strongholds. Amen. I say that again. Those things are just the fruit, but not the root of strongholds. Ed Silvoso, an Argentinian author and evangelist, said it this way. A spiritual stronghold is a mindset impregnated with hopelessness that causes us to accept as unchangeable situations that we know are contrary to the will of God. We have to understand that the mind is the access gate to Satan. He uses it to get at our spirits. 
Amen. And the only hope in battling strongholds is to discover and disarm them. I'll say that again. The only hope in battling strongholds is to discover and disarm them. Amen. The word stronghold actually occurs about 50 times in the Old Testament, but only once in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it refers to a physical fortress uh, that was built to surround and protect. Strongholds were high walls uh, erected around castles, around fortresses, and sometimes even around a city. The people of God in the Old Testament depended on strongholds to protect them against the enemy. So back then, strongholds were actually a place of safety, uh, a place of refuge. Amen. The Lord himself is even referred to as a stronghold in Nahum uh, chapter 1, verse 7. It reads, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. The reference to the word stronghold in the New Testament comes from our text today, found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, actually starting at the third through the fifth verses. In the King James, it reads like this, starting at the third verse. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse four, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, in the Old Testament, strongholds were meant to surround us and keep us safe from the enemy. But now in the New Testament, strongholds have become spiritual barriers, keeping the people of God surrounded by the enemy, enclosed in on all sides, bound and stuck. As a result, the word says in our text that strongholds must now be then pulled and cast down. They have now become the high thoughts that seek to be exalted above what we already know about God. Amen. So when our text is talking about strongholds, they are these speculations which comes from the word logismos in the Greek, which is also translated arguments in the NIV, reasonings in the Amplified, imaginations in the King James, and warped philosophies in the Message Bible. Could it be that a further study of strongholds in the New Testament reveals that they really are just the lofty things the word talks about, the hoopsma in the Greek, translated as pretensions in the NIV, high things in the King James Version, and barriers in the Message Bible? In verse 5, we see also that strongholds are the thoughts, the noema in the Greek, translated as opinions and schemes, according to the Message Bible. In short, the meaning of strongholds, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, reveal to us that strongholds are fleshly ways of thinking, perceiving, processing, and living that have become barriers to the power of the Holy Spirit and thus refuges and spiritual encampments where the enemy can bind, deceive, hinder, and work in or among us to keep us out of purpose and stuck, held in place and detoured from destiny. Now, since the specific term strongholds uh, is mentioned only one time in the New Testament, we look for other passages that address speculations, lofty things, thoughts, or opinions that become barriers to the working and the moving of the Holy Spirit. It seems that such things are also warned against uh, in several other New Testament passages that use these parallel terms for strongholds. Colossians 2 and 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Philosophies. Another translation of Colossians 2 and 8 says it like this, See to it that no one takes you captive, or put in bondage through philosophy. That word philosophy there, philosophia in the Greek, is also translated big words in the Message Bible, intellectualism in the Amplified. It is a composite word from philos or affection and sophia or worldly wisdom. So in other words, we are warned against the affections of worldly wisdom. Amen, somebody. Empty deceptions. Colossians 2 and 8 also says, see to it that no one spoils you through vain deceit. That word translated actually means intellectual double talk, according to the Message Bible. Intellectualism, again, according to the Amplified, or high sounding nonsense, according to the New Living Translation. So in other words, we're warned against letting anyone spoil the purity of our thinking with high sounding nonsense. Anybody ever had anybody come at you trying to change your mind with some high-sounding nonsense? Amen? 
What about intellectual double talk? See, the brothers get that at the barbershop every week. Amen? You got to know your Bible just to get a haircut these days because them barbershop discussions and arguments get heated. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And if you're not fully persuaded, some of that intellectual double talk can cause you to elevate those things that might come up against you to, to be allowed to elevate themselves above what we think we know or, or already do know about God. And the result is a stronghold. Amen, somebody. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 6 through 7 says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Okay? Empty words. Ephesians 5 and 6, again, translates, Let no one deceive you with vain words, or kinos logos in the Greek which is translated as religious smooth talk uh huh, or, or groundless arguments, according to the Amplified. Can anybody here testify that the enemy has been caught using a lot of religious smooth talk, some Kinos logos in our day? <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. First Timothy chapter six, verses 20 through 21. Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called, verse 21, which some professing have, have erred concerning the faith. Worldly and empty chatter. The NIV reads that text in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 20 as, guard what has been entrusted to you, avoiding worldly and empty chatter and the opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge. The phrase empty chatter is also translated idle babblings, according to the New King James Version godless chatter in the NIV, and foolish discussions in the New Living Translation. Amen? The Word of God says in Colossians 2, uh, verses 20 through 23, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perishing with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom, in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. This text reveals to us the stronghold of the elementary principles. Amen? Elementary principles. The word says, you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, matters which have the show of wisdom or the appearance of wisdom. Elementary principles here is translated rudiments of this world in the King James. Elemental spiritual forces in the NIV and puffed up and childless religion in the Message Version Bible. Amen? Puffed up and childish religion. And when we don't guard against these things, strongholds produce devastating effect in the lives of the believer. Amen? Strongholds expose a severe inconsistency between what we say and what we believe. Inconsistency between what we say and what we believe. Amen? And we begin to cope with these strongholds by erecting a partition which separates our mind into two compartments. On one side is the knowledge of God. On the other side is human speculation. A speculation is a conclusion based on an assumption that can't be proven. Uh huh. And though what we say is what we repeat from the word, often what we believe lines up more with human speculation that can't be proven. Speculation secretly planted in our hearts and minds by the enemy, just like tares among the wheat. Amen, somebody. This fragmentation makes us develop what James describes as a double mind. You ever wonder where that came from? Right. A double mind producing instability in every areas of our lives or a stronghold. James 1 and 8 says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. When such believers are convicted, they bail out by using rationalizations to defend themselves. Amen. These lofty arguments, <laughs> empty and vain religion to defend themselves. Amen. How can we believe one thing in church and another thing by the time we get to the parking lot? A double mind. Amen. How can we say one thing? as we quote and stand on uh, and, and preach and teach the word of God, but in our hearts we believe and live out something totally different. A double mind. Amen? Can you imagine the devastating effects this has on the life of the believer long term? Saints trying to believe God for a breakthrough in their church who can't forgive a past hurt. 
Saints trying to believe God for a miracle in their city who can't even enjoy their marriages. Saints trying to believe God for power to witness who do not even have the power to live holy. The result is that you have a convicted, doubting, condemned Christian that will be unwilling to assert his or her legal kingdom rights. Amen? Causing purpose to be stuck. Causing the stronghold to stand. Amen, somebody. Strongholds. Have we been stuck in the ever tightening grip of these strongholds because we have not renewed our minds to the kingdom mindset? Are we stuck in this mindset because we have been led by worldly wisdom instead of being led by the spirit of the living God? Have we been tricked into a, a trap because though we have come to faith in Jesus Christ in our hearts, but our mentalities, perspectives, and processing systems are still bound in carnality because we have unrenewed minds? Stronghold. Because many of us, unfortunately, are in the world and still of the world. I'll say that again, because many of us are unfortunately still in the world and still of the world. We are in the world and still bound by their values, their wisdom, their doctrines, their ordinances. And this has become our stronghold, keeping us in that stuck state. Amen, somebody. Realizing we're born again into the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, but living outside of the kingdom, blessing and power of the kingdom, because we're still carnal in our thinking and thus diluted in our believing. Amen. Oh, you might have stopped the outward sins in terms of the do do's and the don't do's and, and you have a form of godliness. Amen. But because your mind is not renewed, you have no power to break free and move forward to actually begin to pursue purpose. And you're stuck at that starting line, poised for purpose, but you're powerless to move. Turn with me to Romans 12 and 2. Amen. A lot of you know this one already. But today we're going to walk in and manifest it. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The NIV says it this way. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in terms of his plan and purpose for you. Amen, somebody. Amen. So now you know as theologically responsible kingdom citizens, we always look for the do in the word. And today our first do, we just discussed it, is found in Romans 12 and 2. The first step to doing Romans 12 and 2 is to decide to begin. Amen. See, now that that stronghold is exposed, his tactic, his schemes, his maneuvers, you can begin to now walk in the light of revelation. <laughs> Amen. See, kingdom people can't stay stuck in a stronghold after they discovered that they're in one. I'll say that again. Kingdom people can't stay stuck in a stronghold after they discovered that they're in one. Amen? See, we already have the power to be free, but God has had to turn on the light so we could see. Amen? So now we've just exposed the enemy. <laughs> we've exposed and brought to light his devices, keeping the people of God stuck and prohibited from purpose. Amen? You know he hates to be exposed. He likes darkness. He likes ignorance. He thrives on you being ignorant and oblivious or in the dark about what he's doing to and through you. Somebody give God praise right there. Amen. But when God gives us revelation, he steps in and sheds light so that we can begin to walk in it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God, for the light of revelation. He shines that light so we can see. Tell the enemy, I see you. I see you. Amen. So how many of you know that light does not struggle with darkness? Amen? As soon as the light comes on, the light has to go. The light has to flee. Praise the Lord, somebody. Have you ever walked into a dark room and hit the switch that's working properly, that is, and the light struggled to drive out the darkness? I don't think so. So too today does the revelation God is giving us turn on that light in our hearts and minds to drive out the darkness, to drive out what we didn't even see, to drive out what we didn't see so we can walk in the light of revelation and wisdom and be unstuck. Today we are getting unstuck so that we can finally go into purpose, finally begin to run our purpose race. 
Amen? So declare with me right now, family, I'm renewing my mind. I refuse to conform to this world. I am being transformed, and I'm being transformed beginning right now. I cast down every thought, every imagination, every foolish argument, everything that would seek to exalt itself above what I know about God. And it is so right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Then, as we have now made this declaration and we decide to walk in it every day, say every day, every day. Remember now, this is, this is not just a one-time declaration, but a daily decision to walk out this transformation process every day. Say every day. Amen. So now we move forward to freedom because we realize now through revelation that we got the power. Do you not remember the delegated power Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 18 verses 18 through 20? What does it say? The NIV Bible says it this way, truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. So our next step to getting unstuck is to flip the script. Say that with me, flip the script. That's right, yes. See, we have the delegated authority from the Lord Jesus Christ himself to do what? To flip the script, amen? We flip the script and where he has been using strongholds to bind us and keep us stuck, we have the right and the power to bind him and to loose ourselves from the power of the enemy stronghold. Somebody give God some praise right there. Well, how do we do that there, sir? We can use the name of Jesus and the power of us coming together in agreement to bind the devil, to stop him in his tactics and his schemes and his foolish arguments. We can loose ourselves from carnal thinking and begin to run free into purpose, into our destiny, because now we run with transformed mind and a bound enemy. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Tell me, what can we not do with a transformed mind and a bound enemy? Amen, somebody. See, we're called to enforce in the now what Jesus has already did back then. I'll say that again. We're called to enforce now what Jesus did back then. The word of the Lord says in John chapter 3 verse 8, the one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. That word destroy in this verse means to loose, release, untie, and undo. Jesus came so that we could break the stronghold so that we would be free, so that we could run loosed, released, untied, and unstuck. Am I right about it? And he has to let us go. Tell him, you got to let me go. Amen? You got to let me go. All throughout the New Testament, the Lord has been telling us what to do with strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 tells us to pull down strongholds. The word says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Pull down in this passage means to destroy, take down, and cast down, to demolish, and to smash. Amen. Say it out loud. We're pulling them down. Amen. We're pulling them down. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 tells us to take them captive. The word says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen? Bringing into captivity here is translated, lead every thought and purpose away captive. Amen? Or to capture rebellious thoughts, according to the NLT. Anybody on here ever had any crazy thoughts that you knew wasn't of God? Anybody actually get into a mode where you were thinking crazy and your mind was running down the wrong track to the point where you knew that if you didn't bring those crazy rebellious thoughts into captivity, you would have made some tragic choices that threatened to ruin your life and detour your destiny? Amen. Anybody on here honest enough to admit that there were a few times when you didn't cast down the imaginations and crazy thoughts? Amen. And they led you to a painful place. A place you knew was against the will of God. Amen. A place you knew would not let you walk into purpose and the things God has set for you. Amen. Declare with me today. Say yes. I did that. Yeah, I did that. But I ain't going back. 
Amen. My mind is renewed. And from now on, I bring those thoughts, those ideas, those imaginations and those crazy reasonings into captivity. And I make them obey Christ in Jesus name. Declare it with me. From this day forward, I become the stronghold to crazy thoughts and I take them captive in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord God. We have the authority to do it, family. We have the authority to do it. We have the command to do it. His word tells us to take them captive. And if we didn't have the power and the authority to do it, his word wouldn't have commanded us to do so. Amen, somebody. We see clearly now that one of the enemy's primary schemes is to erect and build spiritual strongholds to enclose and to surround and to trick and to trap the people of God into bondage so that our purpose is prohibited and we remain bound and unable to move. But the word of God in Ephesians 6 exhorts us to stand firm against the schemes, the methods, the tricks, the foolish arguments of the devil and to instead put on or replace them with the whole armor of God. Thank you, Lord God. Anybody know that verse? What does it say? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 uh, through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, say therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Amen. So, the kingdom combat strategy and strongholds, the enemy schemes, are to be addressed by putting on the whole armor of God. So put it on, family. Put it on so you can resist. Put it on so you can stand firm. Put it on so you can pull down strongholds that are keeping you stuck. Amen? Look at your neighbor or just say to yourself out loud, put it on. Hallelujah. Put it on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Isn't it good to know that God made a way to make sure we could be free, unstuck from the tricks, the traps, and the mind gains of the enemy? Isn't it good to know that though the enemy may bind us, that God has given us the authority to be loosed? Amen? Isn't it good to know that though the enemy may use strongholds to frustrate us, that God is so wise that he always come to frustrate him? All throughout history, the enemy has been scheming and plotting against the people of God to trick, to trap, and to detour them from the plans and purposes of God, using his perverted philosophies and evil, crazy thoughts. Amen, somebody. My baby daughter, Lauren, who is grown now, <laughs> she used to always say a, a crazy word, which I didn't understand to recently. She would always say, you thought, amen. Somebody would say something crazy to Lauren or, or try to do something crazy to Lauren. She would look at him and say, you thought. A girl in the neighborhood would try to step to her, thinking she was going to punk her or intimidate her. And her reply would always be, you thought. A boy would try to do something inappropriate. She would hit him upside the head with her heavy hand itself and say, you thought. Even with me, I'd be like, Lola, you, gonna, you, gonna, you got the kitchen tonight, right? And she would turn a little bit more politely and say, you thought. <laughs> but then come the weekend, I'll be like, where you going? Well, I'm finna go down here with my people. I'll be like, uh-uh, you thought? <laughs> and see, the enemy all throughout history would try to run his schemes on the people of God. And the Lord would step in and say, Psh, you thought? The enemy would say, I'll trick Eve out of the garden and out of her place in God and I will reign on earth forever. God said, you thought? The enemy said, I'll send Goliath to torment and intimidate the people of God so that they stay stuck and in, the sum, and, in, and in submission never to fulfill the purpose of God. God said, you thought? The enemy said, I'll trick the people into killing Jesus so the people will never be reconciled back to God and have the kingdom restored to them. God said, you thought? 
The enemy said, let me destroy his name and break his heart so that he'll never step out on faith and do destiny. But God said, you thought? The enemy said, let me tempt her husband to cheat and to leave her with these bills and these babies so she'll stay stuck and keep purpose on pause. But God said, you thought? All throughout history, God has been empowering his people to stand against and to overcome the schemes of the enemy. And don't you know he's still doing it today? Amen. Today we tear down. We pull down strongholds of the enemy that he thought would keep us stuck at the starting line, hindered from running the race to fulfill our kingdom purpose. Today we put on the whole armor of God so we stand firm against the schemes of the devil. He thought you were going to stay stuck. He thought. Amen. But God has already made a way for you to be free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right there. Somebody give him some praise right there. I can't hear you, but I believe you're praising him. And it is so right now in Jesus' name. Amen. But beware. I've got to keep it all the way 100. I've got to keep it all the way real. Your breakthrough will not be gained with a passive or polite heart attitude. It will require an exercise of kingdom authority and kingdom power because the stronghold will not be released easily. Amen. Oh, you thought the stronghold was just going to be released by a quick one-time Sunday school style prayer. Not so. It will require you to persist and to consistently do this word and to stay yielded to the power of the Holy Spirit to work in you and through me. Amen, somebody. But here's the gospel. Here's the good news. Amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Amen. Go take your freedom. Live unstuck and fulfill kingdom purpose now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your words today, O oh God. We thank you for giving us revelation. We thank you for turning on the light so that we can see the scheme the enemy has been using to keep us stuck, O oh God. To keep us unable to run forward into the purpose you planned and ordained for each and every one of us, Lord. But we thank you that you have given us a way to stand and a way to be free, and a way to move forward today, oh God. And we declare that we will live with renewed minds, and that we will be transformed, oh God. We will use the authority the Lord Jesus gave us to bind the enemy, and to loose the plans and purposes of God, so that we run free. Lord, we declare that we will forever make it our habit to cast down every thought, every imagination, every foolish worldly argument, every philosophy that would seek to exalt itself above what we know about you today, O oh God. And we will do this forever. We will put on the whole armor of God that we can stand against the scheme, the attacks, and the arguments of the enemy so that we remain free, so that we remain unstuck and continually moving forward into the plans and the purposes of you, O oh God. And we all come into agreement declaring this to be so right now. And we make this agreement and this declaration in the master's name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now, I'd like to take this time to extend the most important invitation you'll ever receive. I'd like to invite you right now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I believe if you're listening to me right now, it's time you receive the free gift of salvation, eternal life, and entrance into the Lord's kingdom and his royal family. And as you begin this new life in Christ, there are a few key scriptures you need to build your faith and begin your new walk upon. Number one, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Number two, Acts 4 and 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In other words, salvation is not and cannot be found in anyone else. Thirdly, John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. And then finally, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. Listen carefully. It reads that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Close your eyes and pray this prayer uh, aloud after me. Amen. Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. The word says that you love me and that you died and rose again so that I might have a legal right to salvation by grace through faith. Jesus, your word says that if I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that I will be saved. Well, Lord Jesus, I believe and do not confess this truth. Therefore, based on the truth of your word and on the faith in my heart, I declare and confess now that I am saved. Family, if you prayed this prayer today, will you notify us by clicking the I'm saved button in the chat and giving us your contact information so we can now send you some information materials to help you in your new walk of salvation? Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Now it's time to connect with a good Bible-based church so you can now begin to grow and begin to pursue your kingdom purpose. Amen and congratulations. Well, praise God, family. We, the Cardia family, would like to give you the opportunity to sow into this ministry right now. One of the things we prayed at the very conception of this ministry is, Lord, make this church good ground. You know, make this church fertile soil. That as the people sow and give into this ministry, that you would do great things in their lives. Amen? And we know that giving from a pure heart without compulsion is out of honor and love. It's God's will when you come to you. So this is how we do it. Amen? The Dear Kingdom Church is a 100% hybrid church. We tithe after the order of Melchizedek. And we know that this is God's will and the kingdom way. So we tithe also out of honor and love. And God just responds in wonderful and tremendous ways. And this we will do until the Lord return. So if you'd like to tithe or give an offering, we have a few ways to do so. Number one, you can click the Give button here on the screen in the Virtual Worship Center. Number two, you can send a cash out to Cardia at uh, dollar sign cardia church that's dollar sign c-a-r-d-i-a c-h-u-r-c and number three you can give it our main website at www.cardia.church forward slash thank you so much for your kindness love and generosity